All right, everyone, going to be getting into the core players here for the Century Tournament of Champions. Going to be focusing on those players here that are going to be good stat fits. Good stat fits are going to be players that have strong control. So stroke scan approach, ball striking, we're going to be looking at that. We're also going to be looking at players that, if they do have course history here, players that have had good results here, and obviously recent form. The thing with recent form is that I like to look at um, over the last 90 days, typically, most of these golfers haven't played over the last 90 days, so you know we'll have to see. But we're going to start off with probably the favorite. It's going to be John Rahm. And I'm perfectly fine betting John Rahm outright as well. 7-1 to odds there for John Rahm. We look at his recent form. Other than that, missed cut in his most recent start. Second, ninth, third, third. John Rahm has been the best player in golf uh, other than Charlie Woods there. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I really do like him. Course history-wise, we can see Four straight top 10 finishes, 7th, 10th, 8th, 2nd. We'd love to see that from John Rahm. Top 10 stat fit. I have him projected to finish top 5. In the 9-5 to five model, he is top 3 as well, tied with Sam Burns. So, yeah, John Rahm really checking all the boxes. Wouldn't shock me if he was able to go out and win this week or at the Century Tournament Champions. The next core play is going to be Sunjay M. This one might surprise some of you guys, but when I was looking at some of the secondary stats, like the specialist stats is what I call it, he was really popping. So like course length, uh, course style, seaside course, uh, bad weather. He's someone that was really popping up there as well decently. And he's someone that has played well at this course in the past. Fifth place finish here last year in his first start. We look at that recent form. His recent form has been pretty good. 19th, 9th, 1st. We'd like to see that staff at top six staff fit. Got him at a projected finish of top 10. So he's someone in DFS that I think is going to be um, lower priced than he should be. I think he's going to be someone that I think is a safe play for like a round of top 10 finish, but I also do like him as an outright bet at 22 to one, just because he's ranking out as the second best pick in the nine to five model this week. And then we look at the next player, Seamus Power. So this is where I'm going to get into like kind of the value side of it, the DFS side of it a little bit more here. Uh, Seamus Power is 50 to one for his odds. So that tells me that he's probably going to be a value pick. We just look at that recent form there over his last four starts, a fourth, a missed cut, 11th, and a 12th. We love that. We love that he has that upside. So out of his last four starts, he's had three top 12 finishes. That is spectacular. Not that many players in the field have been able to do that. So Seamus Power, I love the upside from him. Not really the best staff in the field, only 19th there. Do have him projected it, uh, to finish around top 25, but he is someone that I think could put it together. Um, just going back to the specialist page once again. Um, I pulled up players that have the best finish on bad or worst conditions. And he was popping up there. He was popping up there pretty good. Top 10 there, which is a little bit shocking to me. And he's had 14 starts. So his average finish on those tracks was 36. Pretty good there for someone that, you know, it's a little bit shocking, I guess. He's probably used to playing in the those windy conditions, but yeah, Seamus Power, 50 to one, those are great odds. I think he's gonna be a great value play. Once again, going back to the strategy, you want to focus on players that have the upside from the value tier range because you're gonna be focusing on players on the top end that are most likely gonna top 10. And I think Seamus Power gives you guys that upside to potentially get a top 10 finish. I think it's gonna be a safe play as well. And then getting into the last core play, Colin Morikawa. So I think Colin Morikawa is going to be a popular outright bet. 12-1, to 1, I don't mind that. We look at his recent form, second, 26, uh, 63rd there. Don't mind that from Colin Morikawa. I'm perfectly fine with him as a pick just for those two reasons. Top nine stat fit. Um, he has a projected finish of 10th or of a top 10, sorry. I'm okay with that. You know, I like it. I just, I really like that strong course history. We look at his um, stats as well as key stats, effective scoring is eighth. That is spectacular. Effective stroke scan off the tee, fifth. Birdie to bogey ratio, 15th. Stroke scan approach, 39th. Long iron accuracy, fourth. He's the best in the field in long iron accuracy. Love that. Uh, ranks out top 10 in the 95 mile this week. Kyle Morikawa is going to be my last core play. All stuff that I'm excited to go on again. I've missed PGA DFS, I've missed chatting up with you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully this isn't too long of a video. I kind of just want to get something out to people where, you know, they're working their nine to five, they're bored at work. They want to give something to listen. They kind of want, I don't want to say fluff because I want this to be as fluff free as possible. 
But at the end of the day, that's kind of what you have to do to like create content. And that's why I'm gonna be putting out shorter forms for those people that want that short form content. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like subscribe. I do appreciate it. And as always, guys, let's keep catching.